guest Please. on the program, the mayor of the city <laughs> of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles. Nosey, how are you, man? Good, good. You know, I'm going to add to that game. Uh, I had taken my son and my grandson to the their first backyard brawl, mm-hmm. and, and as you know, they live in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and uh, big Pitt fans, and uh, they wore their Pitt gear, and uh, my grandson said to me after the game, he says, Grandpa Nolsey, he says, that was the best football game, and they, they lost. That was the best football game that, that I've ever been to. That beat out being at Ben Roethlisberger's last game. No, I converted him. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, that's fact. needless to say, I had him down on the field and all that. So that was that was. So he's now a West Virginia fan. Uh, well, he 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 walked off wearing a West Virginia jersey. He started off as a Pitt fan and left as a well, West Virginia fan. Well, he lost a fan. bet, so now he's he got a nice jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Grandchildren bought thank, off so easily. Thank <laughs> thank goodness I didn't have to wear the Pitt jersey. <laughs> I don't th- I don't think there was any danger with that preschool quarterback under center of wearing having to wear. Wait a minute, a Pitt was, win. was it your grandson that was playing? <laughs> no, that wasn't my right. grandson. You said, okay. you said a preschooler, Rob. Uh, he's, he's, not, he he's, not, he's not preschooler. Kevin's grandson would have outplayed the pit quarterback in that game. <laughs> hey, I want to tell you about, uh, we did this segment yesterday. I want to get uh, Kevin's take on a few things because of his involvement early on in the process here. But the Hand Up to Recovery dinner, Saturday, October the 14th at the Holiday Inn. Doors open at 6. Dinner is at 7. You can buy tickets here at the radio station, uh, TV 10, WRNR, between 10 and 2 weekdays. Uh, You need a check uh, made payable to the uh, United Way of the Eastern Panhandle and put Friends of Recovery Dinner in the memo section. It's $60 per ticket. If you can't make it here, you can call 304-671-9320, 304-671-9320. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Hutchison will be the keynote speaker at this uh, dinner on October the 14th, and the proceeds will help to benefit Berkeley County Recovery Services and the Adult Drug Court Program. Uh, Kevin, uh, early on in the process of uh, getting the situation in the Eastern Panhandle uh, improved, you were hired by the county uh, to help be in charge of recovery services around here. So you kind of were on the ground floor hitting it and uh, helping to get this stuff up and running. What do you remember about those early days? You know, I remember serving prior to that uh, as part of the first drug court team with uh, Judge Yoder uh, out of Jefferson. It was a Jefferson Berkeley County uh, program at the time when when both uh, uh, day reports were were connected, and then uh, we moved on and, and moved on and had Berkeley County had their own day report and their own drug court, and I was part of that drug court team also for for many years. And uh, you know, you're right. There was really nothing here. Uh, back in 2015, 16, for uh, services for recovery, and, and uh, the county offered me a, the opportunity to be able to uh, bring those services here, uh, identify them, and bring them here. And as you see today, you have a plethora of uh, services here, including a treatment facility in Kearneysville. What was step one in getting something started here? Well, well, step one was uh, was having somebody to be able to. Uh, uh, look at and have the experience to be able to bring those type of services here and and step part of that step process was the county hiring a grant writer which uh, allowed them to get grants to be able to fulfill those positions to be able to to bring it to where it's at today once the people were in place what was the moment when you thought to yourself okay this is actually going to work it'll happen and it's going to be successful well i, I think uh, day one i mean i i i didn't get into to it not to be successful with it and things that I've been involved with in the past. My background is business development and and and, and my background in the recovery aspect of things that has been around for a lot a lot of years of my own recovery and being involved in in treatment aspects for the last 26 years. It, it wasn't uh, hard for me to get uh, into it because uh, I was already I was already doing it um, you know per se as part of my life. There was, uh, I remember, a lot of pushback, not in my backyard, uh, pushback that was taking place during the attempts to acquire a facility and such. What was a key moment in getting that part developed? Well, you know, that was that 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 uh, that development was in the city. That was shot down by the city officials, and and then we were able to, uh, I was able to help Dr. Harton's uh, facilitate a grant. Uh, to be able to uh, build Mountaineer Recovery Center, uh, then receive other grants to continue on in his services, what he has there today. 
How do you regard the status of uh, what we are, where we are right now with this? Well, you know, you can always improve, but uh, from where we were at, uh, I think Matt can attest, even on the legal side, from where we're at to where we're at today, is there's there is no comparison. Uh, we are now uh, the leaders in the state uh, in a lot of different areas, uh, so we need to be able to to be able to pull everything together. I think in the beginning, this this is only my issue that in the be, when this all started, everybody was worried about their own piece of the pie. And my goal was to bring the pie together to be able to create this resource center, create these different organizations to be able to ha- to go to one place to be able to, to identify where they could go. What I'm seeing today and the reason why I've, I've backed off of it is that people are going after that piece of pie again. And uh, I don't I don't work well when, when people are just trying to uh, use individuals uh, as pawns to be able to get the piece of their pie so that uh, the whole, when the whole pie should be working for everybody. Put, put that in uh, common sense terms to me as to what you mean by people are grabbing. Did I say that jumbling? <laughs> yeah, so well, let, you know, um, so there's, there's, there's a lot of different services out there. There's still there's a lot of great services out there. There's a lot of good services, and there's some bad services. So everybody is jockeying for that individual service, for that individual that's su- suffering from a substance abuse disorder, and, and it kind of um, clouds up. Uh, what really needs to be done. And, and for me, it's, a, it's about a life. It's about saving a life. And uh, just because Kevin Knowles feels that it's not the right program doesn't mean it, it's the wrong program. But uh, that's just my own personal belief. What's the next logical stop in the process here? Well, uh, I, in the process here, I think, uh, you know, you're, you're going to start. There, there has been a, another uh, treatment uh, facility coming to the area. I believe they bought the old Boy Scout camp or the Salvation Army camp, and and they're working on having some type of inpatient treatment there. Uh, Dr. Hardens has also um, been able to uh, create what he calls the Recovery Village. Uh, that's starting to take some format uh, with his his organization or his nonprofit that's associated with Mountaineer Recovery Center. So I think. Right now, what needs to be done is we need to tweak what we have and make that continue to make that better uh, rather than continue to try to grow because uh, when you grow it, it kind of muddies the water in my book. You know, you want to, I always believe, start with something small, make it work, and then expand it from within and not get too big, too quick, too fast. People you say are kind of grabbing at pieces of the pie. What is the advantage for them to do that? Money. More federal dollars? Uh, not necessarily, just uh, you know, fees from you know Medicaid, private insurance, whatever it might be. Matt, from a prosecutorial standpoint, you obviously see this on a regular basis in the courts in uh, Jefferson County. What's the next logical thing you'd like to see happen? Well, you, you know, the good thing about being an attorney is you don't have to be a an expert in everything you just have to be able to find the people that are experts and and i rely on people like like mayor Knowles and the people in jefferson county to tell me what they think in their estimation the ones that are dealing with the patients or, or their clients uh, on a personal level what they think they need is, is best but um with all that being said i think that we need to create more opportunities to get this population jobs there is work being done in that but once they're stabilized and they've got a a, a period that they've uh, checked all the boxes you know uh, passed all the drug screens we need to get them to work if if that is lacking in their lives yeah and one you know one of the things you asked me what what is uh, uh what's next and i could tell you that and i can't speak for jefferson county or or berkeley county but uh the Martinsburg Police Department has a social worker that works with them who is a former deputy that that does the social work, goes out on calls uh, for individuals that are are suffering from substance abuse disorder, works with the children. Uh, Our goal with with uh, any any of the monies that, the little monies that we're going to see from the the settlement is that we're going to be, we're going to be looking to possibly hire a couple more of those individuals to work with the police department because we've seen a huge success with it with uh, using it john i presume if we look just at at like balance sheet numbers we not the the obvious social benefits and such that come from having these programs are are the programs ultimately a net negative financially just in terms of dollars and cents do they the do these programs pay for themselves or is there a lot of 
public money that or some public money that goes into it. Because here's the larger question. Actually, I get to it. It's this came up when um, uh, Doug Copenhaver was here yesterday. It was kind of a, a, a throwaway comment that he made. It got me to thinking. We're doing wonderful things here in terms of battling addiction and providing resources for people and all that. Is an offshoot of that that we are attracting people from other parts of the state to come here and take advantage, and not in a negative way necessarily, but take advantage of our programs and walking away from their their places of residence to come and relocate here for our for our program. You see yeah, that? I don't I don't you know, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but you know, we also have individuals who leave here to go other places to take advantage and try to change their lives too. Mm-hmm. And we did that for a long, long, long time because in two thousand sixteen there was absolutely nothing nothing here in the eastern panhandle when we were the the financial hub of the state for people who had substance abuse disorder they would have to go four or five hours away and and most of them if not all of them didn't come back because they they didn't want to come back to that environment so uh, does it happen it happens not only in in uh, um, private treatment but also you know any any medicaid that treatment that's happening or any other services so uh, as far as it being a problem i don't see it being a problem i don't see it being uh, a high number uh, mm-hmm. most most individuals that are receiving the services especially you know your day reports they're local people you know these these aren't individuals that have come in here to to seek treatment and then go to day report we do have other parts of the state that come seek treatment into the treatment facility here in kearneysville go back to their own day re- day reports and drug courts in their own counties so uh, they all work kind of together. Do it, y'all have been here a long time. Do you have a sense of the? It feels to me that the the drug issue in this area is relatively new. I mean, relative to ten years, or give or take. Is that is that true, or has no. substance abuse been no. been an no. issue here for a long time? I, I, there was. A, a, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt. You might know better, but I think it was in the '80s or '90s. Yeah. There was a huge oh, wow. drug, okay. uh, huge cocaine problem. Jamaican in, drug gangs. It was yeah. in yeah the open air drug market on the hill or yeah. something like that, and it was in the Reader's. I, I I was living in Southern Washington. I read about it, and the Reader's Digest. Yeah, and and these days, you know, you you go back to there was a story that was written in uh, the, the uh, a New York paper or journal or whatever mm-hmm. talking about uh, Baltimore, uh, city of Martinsburg being called the little Baltimore, and we're not called that anymore. You know, those terms aren't being used. We have we have moved so so forward in a lot of these different areas to be able to take care of individuals that need that. Uh, that that help keep in mind you know i've in, in my in my own recovery aspect and the work that i've done in recovery i've dealt with doctors lawyers every aspect of society that needed help with substance abuse disorder and and uh, it doesn't it doesn't pick and choose who it is so mm-hmm. you know I, i'm a mayor for everybody it's not just for individuals that uh, that are, are suffering it's for everybody kevin we are at the halfway point of the year in regards to the home show, right? So if it happens in March, I think it was March 26 and 27. Not it's this now year. September. It's not going to be this year in March. It's going to be uh, on, on the date. Uh, I'd have to see a calendar, but I think it's April 6th and 7th. Reason being is that uh, Easter falls on that last mm-hmm. weekend. So we we didn't want to move it back a week uh, because we know that w- weather is iffy anyway, so you know hope, we're hoping that moving a forward a week that you know we have uh, better weather and uh, but it's still not hindering the attendance. The attendance has been fabulous over the last two years at the at the uh, roundhouse. That roundhouse mm-hmm. has so much potential that uh, you're going to see some a lot of really good things happening there over the next few years. Talk to me about it. As you said, it's been about six months since the last home show. So. During the the home show and uh, subsequently on some shows after that, we talked about the roundhouse, uh, what needs to happen to move that project forward, the way the whole management setup of it is, and who owns what and who has the voting interest in this. Are we getting any further along the way in order to be able to develop that? Oh, most definitely. I I went through there uh, just a few weeks ago to the one building to the side. I, I forget what they call that building. but The rectangular one? Uh, the long one as soon as you walk in yeah mm-hmm. and and uh, I went through that building and my first response was wow you know 
they had the air ducts in and everything. They're going to have the elevator in. They're going to have heat and air uh, for that. Uh, it's still a, a process, you know, for them to get a, a uh, occupancy permit to be able to utilize uh, both uh, upstairs and downstairs. So, uh, you know, the, as far as the monies that are coming in, they have the money to get them to, to this point, so then they'll, they'll be seeking funding somewhere to be able to uh, uh, continue on that process. And you'll, you'll see that building done first before you would see anything more in the roundhouse or the other the other building. How is that uh, entire setup mostly financially funded? Well, I... Um, the city is uh, it does fund uh, projects for them. We did with the ARPA funding. The county does also. Uh, the board is consistent of the city only gets three three appointees. We didn't get appointees until I took over as mayor, and then I asked the county if we can have three of our own appointees, and they were kind enough to be able to to give us that. And uh, who are your appointees? Do you know? Uh, I have uh, Justin Bird. I have um, Halima. Wanamaker, and, uh, and the we'll, third. We'll come back to yeah. the third one. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I don't have that on the top of my head. We got two of the three. You got two of the three, which is pretty darn even, good. Even Meatloaf likes that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two of three ain't bad. Yeah. So uh, they got a grant for the HVAC. Did you have to make up the difference? Did the city make up the difference in that, or did the grant cover the entire amount? Well, I, at the time that the, the grant came out, of course, Things have changed as far as uh, the cost, and uh, and I believe the city and county both came in and uh, helped offset that cost. Cooperation, of course. Well, why wouldn't we? I like that. I don't have a problem with that. Setting the, setting the tone, Mr. Harvey, you're up. Time to prosecute. Oh, okay. Well, Mayor, <laughs> um, so I, I'm I like what you're this social worker that is amongst the the rank and file of the police officers i don't kind of go back to that um is there a, like a soft handoff if a police officer gets to a situation that they realize it's it's more necessary for a, a social worker and and what does that social worker do do they direct the person towards resources or or what yes yes and yes first of all the city doesn't employ this Individual, it is being funded through the Martinsburg Initiative, okay. which the city helps fund the Martinsburg Initiative. So, um, yeah, it's my understanding that uh, it is it would be a soft handoff, or if there's a call uh, that they know going out ahead of time, they'll call and she'll go out with the officers at the time, and then uh, she would work with the individuals to be able to uh, uh, find them the services that they need uh, and do follow up and, and and help in that aspect. I'm sure that that's. <laughs> A tool that the officers love to have in their at their disposal is they can get to working on you know issues that they're more trained on. Yeah, and and you're right. Now, of course, in the beginning, just like anything else, it's very tough to get the buy-in, and and once they got the buy-in, that was it. I mean, I think every officer now is bought into that that aspect as far as uh, the help, and 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 you know the city police department is down 15 police officers so you know it's it makes perfect sense anytime they can get some help from uh, an individual to help with some of that stuff that's going to help them very good. so a hard shift over to the interwoven project how is that coming along well you know what that's come along great uh in fact i'm going to be touring a uh, senator capital tomorrow uh, she'll be on the show tomorrow morning tomorrow, 805 well, you, you, then you'll yeah. you'll see her before i do that very nice <laughs> And uh, um, she's still going to be taking a tour with us tomorrow. And uh, the Chamber of Commerce made a tour yesterday. Uh, I went there, uh, I think it was about a, a month ago or three weeks ago. And the progress that they've made is just phenomenal. I mean, it's my understanding that uh, they're looking to put together their rental team here in December or January. So if you're putting together a rental team, I would imagine that they're going to start doing some rental of some of the the, uh, the facilities there, and and uh, there are some that are that are complete that that you when you walk through, it's like wow, you know, it's just it's phenomenal the work they're doing. You know, we're we're working, the city and and Monument are working together to, to do a stormwater um, project. They have some issues that we have to take care of in that area, and we've been able to, to put our, our, our meat in the game and their meat in the game to be able to make that happen. And, and we're just waiting for all that process to go through. And, and, and I, I think I, I would 
it'd be safe to say that you know by next summer you might see some people there living there. So is the dream to draw new folks into Martinsburg from surrounding areas to... I think it would be both. I mean, uh, if you take a look at the uh, rentals, uh, there's really very not very little uh, rentals or you know even just the real estate market mm -hmm. is so high it gives people an option especially with the the high interest rates to be able to get a market value brand new place with pool community center and all the amenities that you can have and uh, and i think that's going to you know it's going to attract locals along with uh, with people from from outside that would want to to move to this area I think that's a game changer. Well, you know what? I, I, I totally agree. And, and I always say I, we've talked over, over the years about the Mark Train issue and everything. And I just ask, give me seven years. Give, give the Mark Train seven years. And then if you don't see uh, the results that I feel is going to happen, that we all feel is going to happen as a direct result of this growth of it, the, with the uh, interwoven, um, then, then that's a different discussion. The downtown business, restaurants, whatever, it's driven by residents. And if you have residents, and, and residents in that community are going to be slightly affluent, I would suspect, they're spending money on restaurants and shops and whatever, and that drives business. Well, I mean, you look at the, the one that's opening up called The Garage, uh, Diego Lasada. He, he has, he's built a wonderful concept. I go by there every day, and I see the work progressing, and, and that's going to be a huge asset for individuals that live in that area and also draw people from the outside because of the opportunities for, for different choices for meals throughout, throughout the day and night. And yeah, we had Diego in a couple months back. He was, he's a fascinating character. He is. He, you know, great guy. Great guy, and he has great vision, and he's been able to, um, you know, use his uh, resources to be able to buy some uh, wonderful properties here and, and not just sit on them because we've had that issue in the past. People come in and buy properties, sit on them, and, and we just have empty buildings, but he's done everything he can to fill them up. Kevin, good to see you. Thank you so much for coming in. It's good to be here. Thank you.